do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. So I want to talk about a very cool PS2 project that just got released really recently, and this is called MechaPond. So there's a link in the video description where we have a GitHub and you can learn more about MechaPond. And let me just go over like a high level overview of what this is, how this could be beneficial to you. And then halfway through this video, I want to do a video feed of my PS2 uh, showing how to install the MechaPond and how to run it. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to showcase um, a recording of my TV here running my PS2 Slim, the 9K model, and running a PS1 game backup with no mod chip, no Tony hacks, no pop starter, nothing like that. And it's awesome. And we can thank the developers behind this, MechaPond, for making this reality happen, essentially. So before I get too far, um, there's a lot of great detail on this GitHub. The most important thing is there's a lot of disclaimers here. And if you don't know what you're doing, yes, you could brick your PS2. So I caution you guys, please, please, please read the GitHub. Read it very carefully. I'll try to go over the main points here. But um, please, when you get a chance, read the text here. It's a lot of good information. So disclaimer is do not use on a real DTL slash DEX console. That will break your memory card compatibility, apparently, and I know it also causes some other issues. So, but if you have a PS2, and I'll talk about which PS2s are compatible, if you have a PS2 that's compatible, then you should be able to follow my video tutorial later in this video segment and be able to have no issues. Okay, so what PS2 consoles are compatible? Basically, you have the SCPH-500X systems, all the way to the SCPH-9000 or 90,000X series, right? With the exception of the DESR PSX consoles, which are not supported at this time, but a future update is planned to address this. So that's cool. Um, if you have an older PS2 unit, they do not use the Dragon-based Mechacon and therefore are not supported. And unfortunately, no support is planned for those in the future. Okay, so how do you use this? Um, and we'll go over this in more, de more detail. Basically, you run this MechaPon. It's like an ELF file. So you're going to have to have a PS2 that's able to run Homebrew, you know, like you launch ELF. So if you have a slim console, right, or a FAT, you can do this through free McBoot, uh, free HD boot. Uh, what else is out there? Open Tuna, Fun Tuna, Fortuna Project, free DVD boot. There's a lot of stuff out there. Mod chip, right, with a you launch ELF disk. So there's a lot of different ways you could do this. But the bottom line is you have to run the MechaPon. Right. Once you run the MechaPon, then it's gonna make a backup of your MechaCon EEPROM, right, to your USB thumb drive. And then you gotta power off your console by literally disconnecting the power to your console. I use a power switch on my power strip, for example. And then you turn it back on, run the MechaPon a second time, and then you tell it what region you want and uh, what patches you need to install, and you're good to go. And this will make more sense when I showcase this later in the video tutorial. And there's some explanation of the menu options. You can make it a Kex, you know, retail, or you can make it a retail DEX. And a DEX is what we want, which will basically patch the MechaCon and enable some uh, cool features, without, which I'll get to in a second here. How does it work? Um, basically, we're just um, writing some patches, I guess, to the Dragon-based MechaCon uh, based upon this exploit that was found. So if you're really into nitty gritty, please go ahead, check out the GitHub. I know I'm oversimplifying some stuff here. But here's the good stuff. So on SCPH 500X and SCPH 700X series, right, you can do all this stuff, right? So let's say, for example, you have a PS2 USA, right, and you want to run your Japanese game, JPN game, like an actual Japanese game. It probably will not run on your PS2, right? But with this MechaCon patch, you can patch your um, PS2, change the region to make it think like it's a... Uh, you know, Japan region, for example, now all of a sudden your retail JPN game is going to work, right? Or maybe you have a PAL console and you patch it to be like a USA console, for example, like a region check, and now you can play your NTSC games as an example, right? So that's what some of these bullet points are talking about here, basically. And what really stood out to me specifically was the PS1. So in this case, you can boot PS1 disc originals and backups from the console's original region, NTSCJ and PAL consoles. Boot PS1 disc originals and backups from all regions, NTSCU and Asia, non-NTSCJ units only, right? 
If you have SCPH7500X and later models, known as Decker consoles, you have all the stuff that you can do basically, right? And I did some testing already. I did a PS1 game backup. It works flawlessly. No mod chip, no Tony hacks, no pop starter. It's awesome. And I'll showcase how that works at the very end of this video segment. Some FEQs here. Um, you can go ahead and read that if you're interested, if you have one of these particular consoles. And of course, the credits. These are the people that made this happen. So big thanks to all these guys that made this project what it is. And I'm sure that there will be more um, features as time goes on. Now, is it possible for a PS2 backup game to work like this? I don't know. I tested it. It didn't work for me. I don't think the functionality is there. Will it be there in the future? Uh, time will tell, right? So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so what we're going to do is let me go ahead and go to the next part of this video segment where we're going to showcase, I'm going to connect my Elgato here. I'm going to showcase um, my PS2 running the, the files and how to make it work. If you want to get the ELF file, what you got to do first here is on the right-hand side, go to the latest releases. So at the time of this video recording, there's a 101. Download the, the .elf file to your computer, like your desktop, and then copy it over to your USB thumb drive. I already did that ahead of time. But put it on your thumb drive, USB FAT32, and then um, when you do the U Launch ELF on your PS2, you'll be able to navigate your USB thumb drive. Or you could be a USB hard drive, I suppose, and run the ELF file. Like I said, it'll make more sense in the next portion of this video segment. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so let's do this. So what we're gonna do is we go to my version here. We'll see that my console is SCPH9001. So what we're gonna do is go into the browser. I'm using OpenTuna actually for this exploit. So I go into my memory card, press circle two times, hold circle on the second time, and then it's gonna go to my ULaunch ELF program, right? Or WLaunch ELF, I suppose. Once I'm inside the program, then what I'm gonna do is navigate to my master drive, and then I'm gonna go and run my mechapon.elf. So let's go to my master drive. I do have a lot of files on here, but don't worry about it. What we're gonna do is just scroll down to where it says mechapon. So let's run that guy. And then in a little bit, we'll see a graphic of this. So press X to continue. It's doing a backup to USB. Press circle to install the exploit. Now unplug the power cord and run mechapon again. So what I'm doing in this case is I'm actually have my PS2 connected to a power strip. So I just turn off the power strip and then I'm gonna turn the power strip back on basically. So here it is, we're turning it off. And then we're turning back on, turn the PS2 back on, it's booting up. And then we're gonna repeat the process and run Mechapon. So let's go ahead and redo my open tuna here. So I can go into the browser, see the orb, press circle two times. On the second circle press, I'm gonna hold it down, which allows me to go into ULaunch ELF here. And then we're gonna go back to my USB thumb drive and run the Mechapon.elf a second time here. Okay, so we press X to continue. You want to make sure it's retail DEX. So the second one, go ahead and select your console. So I'm the 90XXX series. I'm gonna do USA, cause that's what I'm at. And then it's doing the patches there. Unplug the power cord. So literally just disconnect power to your console. So I'm gonna do that in a second here. And then we're gonna boot it back up with the power back on. And then we're gonna go back to my version screen and we'll see that yes, my region or my console version has definitely changed, um, which is pretty cool. So let's check it out. So we're gonna press uh, triangle here, version, and we see I'm a DTL H9001, awesome. So in the last portion of this video segment, we're gonna showcase me turning on my PS2 with my TV and playing a backup PS1 game, no mod chip. It's awesome, let's do this. Okay, so we're back in my TV here, and we can see that, as shown earlier in the video, I was able to patch the MechaCon to DTL-H9001. So let's take a look, and we're gonna showcase playing a backed up PS1 game. And my PS2, the Slim here, has no mod chip. So I don't know if it's my particular PS2 model, but I just know that it's, it's a little bit funny, and I have to insert a game when it's totally powered down. Your PS2 might be a little bit different. But anyways, here's my backup copy of Twisted Metal 3. So I'm just gonna insert it, turn it on, and then the PS2 is just going to automatically boot the game. 
as if it was a regular PlayStation 1 retail game, which is awesome. No mod chip, right? So we don't have to mess around with OPL or Pop Starter or Tony Hacks, for example. So that's awesome. So you have a PlayStation that is compatible with the MechaCon patches, the MechaPon, then this might be something that you want to look into, right? So this is a great solution, and I'm sure as time goes on, there'll be more improvements to MechaPon. And will we be able to play PlayStation 2 backed up games in the future? I don't know that answer, right? But we'll see as time goes on if that functionality can um, be added or not. But for all the latest information, I'll have links in the video description. Go to the GitHub and check out all the latest information about the Mecha Pond. And if you're also interested, I also have a link to Mecha Dump, which is a, another software that you can use to dump the firmware of your PS2 if you are so inclined to use that for your own personal testing purposes. So that's today's video tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye. <laughs>